Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Vupe aka The Mindpreneur. Today we walk down memory lane with me. I found a journal that is 15 years old and I am so amused at what I found. I thought I must share just the lessons I am learning in letting go about clarity about being intentional about what you're asking from god how my spouse is almost 100 percent everything that i asked from the lord and it was just exciting for me to go into it so i am doing this intro because when i started i didn't think it would be a full-fledged uh youtube video so it starts with just the journal without my face but then the face starts to show so just to stay stick with say stick with the hands the face will come back. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe and join this family of amazing women who are growth oriented in their 30s. See you on the other side. Guys, so I found my journal from like, I don't know, 2008 or something. But like, I'm, I'm so excited. Let me show you how old this thing is. Look, because it's moved from house to house. I think this is even like, Cockroach poop. Yuck. But this is like an old, old journal, as you can see. And like, I'm a little overwhelmed because, yeah, I, I can't believe that this, I've, I've probably always been this person. And I'm always saying people don't change. But I definitely haven't, clearly. <laughs> so, this is my journal. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see what's scribbled here. It says, dare to dream, dare to dream and become it. And this was like in 2008 when I wrote that. I don't know how many years ago that is. It says, be, do, have. Um, it also says, goals are like a target you place in front of yourself you have to see very clearly what you are shooting for if you aim at nothing that's all you will hit nothing sorry I'm, I'm not sure you'll be able to read it and then it says readers are leaders if you don't you wrote and then it says powerful women called and predestined with and by authority of god through his son jesus that's that's this big writing here and then right at the bottom it says take care of god's business he'll take care of yours and there's like luke 12 32 i have a whole stack of bibles so i'm that guy who's like i keep a lot of bibles because I want to refer to, and these are not the only ones, I need to refer to like multiple versions <laughs> to, so that I can see if there was a word missed. So I'm using the ESV to look at Luke 12, 32. Fear not like little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. <sighs> Isn't God amazing? The next pages I have like contacts of people who I thought would influence me. And then look... It says great African legendary leader and the picture you see here I'll tell you another story I worked when we go through the pages I worked for a magazine called trendsetters it was very popular um, so this year when I did when they when I took out this picture from that magazine where I was featured uh, it was a profile of like meet the stuff so I'll tell you more about that so anyway you see here where i wrote it looks like i was having a hard time it said lord i feel and then it's like lord i feel beaten it, it, it then there's like romans 8 37 knowing all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us it just says lord i am bound yet romans 11 26 and so all israel will be saved as it is written the deliverer will come from zion and he will turn godlessness away from jacob so i have misjudged lonely sick troubled unclean in darkness 
friendless, fearful, a failure, confused. And like there's scripture for each of those. Negative thinking. It's, it's just, I'm so amazed that I, I could have been, I was quite wise inside. Yeah. So like, I've, I've, I'm just so excited going through it. Uh, and then here, there's like, I did a healing exercise, point on how to make good choices. Here, what would Jesus do? Uh, purify your mind of past hurts. Um, and one of the things that you're supposed to do is forgive. Wow. And one of the things I have been struggling with surprisingly and funny that of all the days i would find this this journal from 2008 is is one of the things i've been struggling with in the beginning of the year not only anxiety about the platform another thing that i have been struggling with is forgiveness and letting go and just the other day i sat on the floor and i remember something someone did it was in a workspace and they hurt me so badly um whew. i mean they were like the boss in that space and to this day i don't understand why they were so mean to me it's like it's like god is taking me through this season of of letting go and forgiveness and yeah, and it's so hard, and, and it shouldn't be because as believers, God has already forgiven us for so much, for so much. And so I don't know why it's so hard. So God has been taking me through this thing about showing compassion and, and forgiving. And yeah, so it's funny that I found this now. So look, this it's, it was hard, and look, there's no excuse for why I, I wasn't forgiving her until like yesterday or the, the day before. And I didn't know that I hadn't forgiven her. I realized that I hadn't forgiven her because she's going on to do amazing things, but I could never, <laughs> I didn't have the courage. In fact, I had too much pride to acknowledge that the work that she was doing was great. And yeah, I, I, I think I was just filled with a lot of pride and anger. And yesterday I felt like God had brought me to a place where it was like, okay, it's time to let it go. And it was that person's like special day. So I went and congratulated them on that special thing that they were, they were celebrating. And I think I'm almost certain that God was like, Upe, I need you to to let this go because then God brought someone who is a very close connection to that person into my life with whom we are like being accountable to each other. I mean, obviously I haven't shared with that person yet what happened with me and that person. So he knew what happened with me and that person. So like I say, she was younger than me, but in a position of influence. And I was really down. Um, <clears throat> I was having family problems. I was having school problems. I was having business problems. So I was barely trying to stay afloat at the time. So I ended up doing like a part-time gig with where this person was. And every time I walked into her space, she would literally roll her eyes at me. She would <sighs> sometimes not say hi. And yeah so i thought let me turn the camera <laughs> to my face so i was working with this person and there would, there would be times i'd walk into a room with other people and you know she would literally greet everyone present except me right and whatever the conversation that would be carried on would ensure that you know like, I don't see you. Like, like, why are you here? And obviously, because I was already in a broken space as it was, maybe even my mind could have exaggerated her attitude. It's entirely possible. But, like, you know when you're being avoided, you're being avoided. There was a time I remember we were left just the two of us. We had gone somewhere and it was, it was just the two of us. And... <laughs> 
Yeah, and I tried. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not good at small talk. If I don't like small talk. Like, let's have a real conversation, okay? But because this was already an awkward situation for me, so I tried to, to keep a conversation. So I was making an effort to do small talk. And she literally gave me the attitude of stop wasting my time. And I think it was from that encounter that I decided, mm, I'm not going to try anymore. I'm not going to try anymore. And that time, and I think, <laughs> I think I even have a recording of that time because I was going through such a hard time. I used to record uh, my, my, my daily entries. So even if I'm going through a hard time, if, if for instance, I cannot read the Bible, what I do, no matter how hard a time I'm going through, I will listen to the Bible. If I cannot journal things I'm grateful for, or I cannot write things or prayer requests, I will record them. That way, I'm keeping the lines of communication between God and I open, and I am not getting lost too far. So I remember one time, I even accidentally sent think that that recording to another colleague and it was so embarrassing it was so so embarrassing yeah but I remember I think I even have them somewhere in like my database of things just how how hurt I was because my question is like why why do you hate me so much like like what did I do you know and like if I knew I would I would have apologized and so I guess that's, that's how the process of letting go is. Sometimes it, it's like this, it, it oscillates, it's like a pendulum. You think you've let it go, but you haven't really. And yeah, so I'm, I'm having to relearn to, to show compassion and to forgive. And even just going back to say, hey, congratulations on this. Like it took something from me, you know? And it's like, it's like I went back to the pain. And I think it hurt because I felt like, like she was stepping on me again. You know, I don't know if you've had someone in authority treat you badly, and, and it felt like me saying congratulations for that, for whatever it is she was, I was congratulating her for was like me being stepped on again, right? It's like me voluntarily taking myself under her, under her feet to be stepped on. So it was that issue I recognize now that that was pride. That was pride at play. And I can't lie, I felt really bad. I felt really, really emotional. And I even thought about reaching out to, to that person who, who is now sort of in my circle to talk about like, has this person changed at all, you know? Because like to the people that she liked, she was really nice and I don't know. Yeah, so that's about letting go. So just seeing like my journal, which I haven't looked at in like a decade or something or whatever, just to see that we're back at that letting go thing. And it's just like, there's a lot of unlearning right now. Uh, and since we're in, in, in like goal setting frenzy still, and my goals are not complete because obviously, as you know, I am usually done towards the end of January. December is a lot of reflection. January is still a lot of, let's put things into perspective and where are we going? What are we trying to do? So this is sort of the process that I go through. And it looks like this year, there has to be a lot of unlearning. There has to be a lot of forgiving. There has to be a lot of letting go so so yeah I mean like there's another sort of friend of mine I blocked it's like God is just like like digging deep you know and you know those seasons like Christians will understand there are those seasons where like you tell God like oh Lord I'm ready for service and then it's like oh okay let's do that but first we're going to dig deep and then um, clean the vessel first. So God is cleaning the vessel for service. And yeah, there's a friend I unblocked after I really, uh, a misunderstanding that shouldn't have led to what it led to. We had like a bitter argument. 
which I make sense over politics, eh? Politics, not even Zambian politics. So, yeah. Whew. So yeah, I'm, I'm in a season of unlearning. And you know how it's, the way God says he doesn't go back on his word. He says, if you haven't forgiven your brother, then even God won't forgive you. There, there's a scripture like that. But yes, and sometimes I guess at a conscious level, you're like, oh, I've forgiven them. But I don't need to say that I have forgiven them. Right? And, but then why is my conscience not clear if I have not done that? Yeah, and then just in strange relationships or friendships that got really complicated. So I'm just, it's hard. The unlearning and the letting go. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm definitely in, in a season of being conscious and, and learning because if, if your cup is full of anger, what are you going to give? So I guess this is the process of letting go, being, being aware. Because I was like, oh, it doesn't mean anything to me, right? The fact that she was so mean to me. But Wupe, if it doesn't mean anything to you, 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 you support people who are strangers to you on social media. You blow the trumpet of people who you don't know on social media. And even in the world, you recommend you yeah, like that. But why is it that this one person, you're just like, it'll never be me. So just coming to a place of honesty with the fact that also just inner embarrassment. Like, let's just be honest. You know, it's, it's embarrassing to, to, to me that I've held on for so like why I didn't think I held on but like why is it still a thing now you know so it's just embarrassing knowing also that I've held on to this as long as I have so so yeah now it's decisively actively and maybe I'll still have like a bad feeling in my heart or whatever but I'll have to get over it eventually and and I'll have to love my sister she's my sister and the Lord she probably didn't even know that's what she did to me. That's the stupid thing about not forgiving because you're the one who suffers. And Mandela was right about it's a poison. And forgiveness is a poison that, that eats up the vessel. It's eating me, not the other person up, right? So yeah, it's in the season of, of letting go. So I'm excited that I found it in my, in my diary. And I think January will be hard for me because I will have to go and start mending um, a lot of the relationships. I'm always, a lot of my friends know this, I have the gift of goodbye. I have no problem walking away from situations. I have no problem walking away from relationships. But I think there are some that I have walked away from prematurely and, and yeah, we're working on those. So yeah, that's the pro this is how, just how messy the process of letting go sometimes looks like it's it's anger it's not recognizing that it's there i guess it's like denial of the fact that you are actually not letting a situation go but also it's a fact that you can be thriving in other areas of your life but you can't move forward like pour into the cup i've come here and i've said you know what yes let's build a community of sisters so yeah this is the process of 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 dealing this is the process of letting go it's, it's it's not always clean and sweet it's about just being honest with yourself and I'm always saying the worst person to to lie to is yourself and I don't like to lie to myself I, I want to be honest with myself so if I'm going to pour into other people and I want other people to pour into me. I believe that my vessel must be empty, but it shouldn't just be empty. It should be clean so that when I pour out into other people, I'm pouring out from a pure place, not contaminated content. Or when I am receiving from another person, I can receive from a point of gratitude and purity and non-judgment and not thinking someone is 
coming to get me a place of compassion if someone is going through something i don't understand yet but if my heart is full with unresolved issues i'm not saying that after today then i've figured it out i'm just saying that it's important to open up but also like the process of letting go is not linear and but the most important thing is to be open to to wanting to to let go not just because of ministry but even just for for your health eh, anyway when how did we get that deep Ooh. so yeah so here i have like to do lists in in my journal yeah i had to forgive someone very close to me as well and and that's another thing about forgiveness just looking at the person i was doing this exercise with the person i was forgiving in this particular situation when i did the hello the the healing exercise was a very close family relative very close family relative but they haven't changed so i could either continue being angry at them or i could continue forgiving them and forgiveness would be an ongoing process they haven't changed trust me pissed me off yesterday since 2008 still pissing me off now speaking of the gift of goodbye again it's that relative who you can't exactly goodbye so yeah so yeah so another interesting thing that i found in my journal is uh, I don't know. Is this? You see, this is. Let me tell you another story. When I read The Alchemist, I was just like, I am going to follow my dream. And this was the second time. I've told you. First, I read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and there was. Just, I think there's even the summary of <laughs> Rich Dad Poor Dad in here. When I looked, I even laughed. Those were the two defining moments. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I was just like, I'm going to follow my dreams. So, what, what, what. Another time I, I read a book because I read The Alchemist and I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to feed the hungry. I'm going to set up, I don't know, farms. I'm going to buy farms and I'll show it to you. I'm going to find, buy farms in all the provinces of Zambia. And I mean, I didn't buy farms because I wanted to buy, I think, 100 hectare farms in, in each province of Zambia. And it, to a certain extent, God honored that desire to a certain extent. I didn't buy them in all, all provinces anyway, but it, like, yeah, so I went to my boss and I said, yeah, and so yeah, I read The Alchemist because in one of the, which is, this is now the story connected to, to, to that Trendsetters magazine picture. So I had stopped working th th there at the time because I was in school and school, now I had entered law school and it was a bit hectic, but I made an appointment to see her because now she had set up this, company organization that was thriving i said because also you understand that i'm big on mentorship i mean i don't have a mentor and i'm praying and trusting the lord right now for a mentor who will guide me on on the path where i am at i have mentors for specifically my speaking but not for like the mindpreneur as a brand yet and yeah i'm still searching and i'm still praying so yeah, I made an appointment with her because I've always been, I'm going to get to draw wisdom from someone who is wiser than me. So I went there and I told her, I want to set up, this is what I want to do. What, 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 what. And she sat me down and, it, and, and I think she empathized because I think there's a possibility she might have seen herself in me like as a young person who had a big dream, but doesn't really have direction yet and, and she sat down with me and I think that's the first time I I had an encounter with the importance of clarity sitting down so she she asked me very basic questions which I didn't have answers to like okay what are you doing are you doing it for profit or is someone coming or like you know is it for profit or not and is it registered and who who is your who who are you trying to reach what is your why do you have the skills that it do you have the skills required to set up these 10 farms 
nine that was that time there was nine provinces in Zambia to set up these nine these nine farms like you have the skills because uh, in my head I was like I'm just going to apply for funding because I had worked in an NGO so that's how she she wrote the, the situation analysis analysis for me where it says problem statement and it, it talks about she asked so what is the problem you are trying to solve Rupe? okay what is the problem you are trying to solve and who is affected so you start this is the problem right people are hungry because mine is to uh, orphans and widows and and were feeding zambia so people are hungry who is affected widows and orphans now i can answer these easily but like since 2008 and now is a long time no this was in 2008 now this is 2010 and why does this problem exist so if you're going to ask people for money especially abroad they'll need some context so why does this problem exist what can be done to solve this problem and that's that's me now and this is what i i wanted to do and then we went down to target who are these orphans and widows right what is their age obvious what is their sex what is their their occupation where are they and then she went down to talk to me about the objectives and what is the intervention and how to, and like how to set smart goals this was sort of i think if i'm not mistaken this might have been like the first time i was like oh that's what smart goals are so like specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound so yeah and then what are the activities you're going to do and yeah and i don't know um this was Mary. I don't know. Yeah, but like, so from the alchemist, it's like it gives you the dream and then you find a mentor who, who helps you get clarity. I mean, I never went back to her. And, and not surprising because obviously I'm sure after she gave me that, she even knew like, mm, that's going to be a lot of work. Either that dream will die or she'll go and do the work, but she won't be coming back now. So yeah, this was Mary, and I'm just happy to. She was the she was the executive director at the time when I was I was there, and yeah, good times. So clarity, just the importance of clarity, and the the importance of speaking to someone who knows more than you. Yeah, and that's. That's, that's what I learned from here. So anyway, now I've already talked about that. I was going to have like hef farms. I can't even remember why H-E-A-F. I can't remember what those initials were for. That's what it would be. So I was going to, I don't know if you can see. I was going to build schools make a road make the road network great build hospitals uh guys like i was going to do things the idea is that i buy some farms with my own money partner with others for startup sell surplus for sustenance register as a corporation know where you're going before you know how <laughs> give a go I, I don't even know. Right. I was even going to do like a window cleaning company as well. <laughs> oh, oh my. Yeah. So, and what it looks like in this journal, it's like I, for a long time I kept this journal. So, like, I go between 2008. 2010 so this is back in 2010 and 2008 and it said whoop and must have a firstborn in a family of three uh yeah i am i am going to be financially free <laughs> guys i've been wanting to be this you have to see i am going to be financially free been desiring this for some time we have to see this this side of eternity <laughs> has been going to own minds 
what I would like to do is own mines, one in Angola, a diamond mine that is, have a franchise cleaning agency. My heart has always been in the media field, so I would like to have an integrated media company. I feel in my spirit that I have been called to the Ministry of Giving. Therefore, I want to buy farms in every province of the country to feed the poor and my business with to help Christian partners feed the nations and spread the gospel of the Lord with a Zambian man, husband, obviously Christian. Ha. Oh, guys, in five years time, this was in 2008. In five years time, I hope the mining licenses would have been released. Before then, I would have raised money through selling gemstones to start the mines. Let's just say that's not happened, sisters. The cost, mm, this is how you know someone is dreaming. This is the cost, listen. Hard work, education, financial education, determination, focus, vision, but most of all, wisdom that comes from God. Now, you know, this is this sounds flowery and like, and it's beautiful in that, yes, this, this, this will be required, but the cost you, you, I have been learning is you have to break it down. What does that look like? Okay, when you talk about uh, determination, you have to break down determination to down, down to what it actually, what it actually means women are powerful people build invest and I, I, I cannot believe this was me you know i collected i collected so much information here it says how education um is not exactly what you need to to success and there's examples of henry ford um uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and them, and how time is um, the most valuable asset and what limits us. There's even like a part that says, why is God successful? He built from nothing, right? I think this might, might have even been a someone. He built from nothing. He was present. Um, God represents system, so there was a dividing and he was confident in what he was doing. He didn't stop at the foundation, uh, says, um, and he was, he focused on seed, right? He didn't create to eat everything, but when he created, he created like even seed, he had continuation in mind. God didn't need motivation. He was self-motivated. Like God came, says, let us make man, they created and whatever, and he was creative. Um, and he began to impart knowledge after he did the work dispenser. He began to impart knowledge onto Adam. He gave Adam to tend the garden. And yeah, it's just, it's so, like I'm looking through here and I'm just like, yeah, this is awesome. And then I, I wrote about personal mastery as well, right? And the power of purpose commitment, contribution, right? Like life is about contribution. You you are blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, and like money is not hard. I will never be poor in my life. Like guys, <laughs> I was born for the soft life. Here. I will never be poor in my life. <laughs> guys, as intentional. Loss develops character always have a plan b be aggressive even though always have a have always have a plan b i mean I, I i sort of still have a plan b but after like listening to kobe bryant and will smith like people i truly admire in their worth in their work ethic they don't have a plan b they have this this is what i believe and this is what I'm going to, to go for. And honestly, I want to be like that. I'm not like that yet. Like, yeah, so I have a job. And I have the dream. And it feels like the dream is the plan B and the job is to sort of plan A. But, and I hope like in a few years, that will be the reverse. Here is the rich dad, rich dad, 
rich dad poor dad book review this yeah if i've never told you if you've never heard me tell the story of rich dad poor dad and how i went and got dollars from my uncle to start my own business because i thought that i had it after reading a book and that i now i'd be free in the world financially <sighs> yeah yeah i just i guess i've stayed true to just being the person who who reads who who who's always pursuing growth so i wish i could say i'm getting used to it but not i can't lie like letting go is hard so i was learning about the different personality types also in 2008 i'm glad i learned it early because every time i get into a workspace or into an environment i understand people easier and how to to relate to them and i understand myself better yeah so i think this might must have been john c maxwell because it's like qualities of a leader because that's uh, I, <laughs> and another thing that i was i was floored by was like the basics of invest I've, guys i've always liked man so we have their basics of investing right and then let me show you something right here it says personal finance right so you have bonds right there which is to my favorite um you have treasury bills and there was like zisk's zisk annuity program i can't even remember what that was but this was like a long long time ago and then like there's a time i think i had like a um unit trust account with abc there it is and then like i think intermarket also had it's just the camera man even intermarket had like a product similar or i don't know what it was that i i wanted but yeah and i have like investopedia.com 360degreesfinance.com and even jonathan nambali he's an investment consultant i wonder if he's still doing that but yeah so this is 2008 2010 guys been in the system a long time learning 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 so yeah i have always been a hopeless romantic princesses should be spoiled and before we well, are not that before the internet before i had access to the internet this was me always cutting pages from from like magazines and yeah these were some of the prayers i had for my husband i prayed for his head i prayed for his endeavors i prayed for his love i prayed for his physical health before i met this was long before i met him so one of the the, the prayers i prayed prayed was father god to you i come in jesus name i bring my husband to your throne father hear my prayer and above all else Lord save his soul if he's not saved draw him near to you and keep him close be the shield against his foe make him ours you and I guide his feet lord and light his path may his eyes be on you cast and his hands a kingdom task a purpose for give him a purpose for his years give him peace in Christ alone in sorrow be his song no other joy will last as long father calm his fears and as my flesh gives out for breach may i hunger lord instead that my husband would be fed on your words of life so father god to you i come in the name of your son i bring my husband to your throne father hear my prayer in jesus name amen i think this is a prayer copied from somewhere i don't know So like here I had the qualities of the husband I wanted <laughs> model the life of Christ uh my best friend talk openly love to our, our ribs hurt cry together exchange gifts be honest with each other put no one else above us except God even when the kids come 
trust each other, spend all our time together. Guys, like, okay, when, we, we, if I didn't get something, I'll say, but so far, so good. Um, supportive, accepting and understanding, leader, decision maker, romantic. Remind me, no matter how long we stay together, how much he loves me. Uh, buying me books and flowers. Uh, so, yeah, we just got this one. <laughs> I need to tell you that I don't have flowers. It's been a few, it's been a couple of months since I received flowers. Um, stay up long hours chatting at night, uh, in person or on the phone. Like, yeah, we sleep at three. Be open about money, budgeting. A man who claps when I succeed. I, I mean, in my mind, I was always like, you know what, I'm going to pursue. I'm going to be the best version of myself. And I hope he can clap. I, I always wanted a man who had big enough hands to, to, to clap, even in light of the possibility that I might outdo him financially or in, like in the space of influence. In my head, I just always knew that that, that would be a possibility. And, and I needed a man that would see the potential that I think or I thought that I had and would be okay with it and my husband is a powerhouse in his own right and yeah and we we excel at different things and and he claps you know and he supports and that's great we should be successful wealthy rich great potential uh, he should show public affection hold my hand like guys, yeah, he can be all this and vary himself with me. Should have a keen interest in the work of missions. Uh, should, it's just that, like there's this part, I don't know what, what was here that I had, I think there might have been a picture. Like, like God went and created him. The only thing that I say that, that I didn't, I wasn't specific about. It's something I used to say. I, I used to say, I'll never marry a lawyer. And I didn't want to marry a light-skinned person and he wouldn't be Bemba. And God has a sense of humor. He went and created all these things and put him in a fair-skinned man who um, thankfully is handsome and yeah but yeah he's like he's lala and he's 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 as close to bemba as bemba gets okay and yeah and he's a lawyer but i, I wouldn't trade him i wouldn't trade him and i'm glad god knows better than i do and some of these things are very lord i would like to graduate unza get married graduate ziale so i was supposed to be married before i did ziale apparently do my masters then start a family i would love to start I, yeah i was even going to do an interior decorating company in zippo <laughs> anyway so guys i tell you that we love love don't joke about this so yeah here my wedding my beautiful cinderella snow white flake dress guys for my wedding, I fell in love with a champagne gown. That's what we wore. But it was still a princess dress. So, <laughs> matching beautiful but simple tiara, which I had. Uh, I have like a mani and a pedi jewelry. It should be outdoor with only hundred of our favorite people. Like I even say like a Sunday setup. And funny thing is we had our wedding at Dolores Gardens and it's not too far from Sunday's creation. And it was outside. <gasps> oh my God. We should have one of those pretty altars with flowers. Guys, what's become things? <laughs> I can't believe the precision I had. I want to get married in summer on a Friday in a tent in very green, beautiful gardens. Friday because I want to make it fresh. <laughs> I, want, I want to make it fresh Sunday for church. 
<sighs> I, I can't even read this is PG rated so yeah like I thought like the honeymoon would be very complicated so I needed to get past that so that I'm ready on Sunday <laughs> oh my so anyway yeah like this is like I, I had so much detail about how our our marriage would be and some of these are very like intimate and I, and I can't exactly say because obviously like it's not the platform yeah like I planned who my maid of honor would be the best man the colors let me see if I did go with the colors pink silver some white some black yeah there's a lot of white and and like like greens and then yeah we're going to go to the bahamas i need to tell moses he needs to take me to the to the bahamas <sighs> then you would be picked by me and my husband it's just something that we did yes and my sister who is my best friend was my maid of honor and they did carry the rings preaching pastor makashini and he did preach at our at our wedding uh wow like i, I cannot even believe it but yay wow for my honeymoon i even had songs like here's the short list uh tonight john legend glow in the dark cloud nine <laughs> so some asha songs take you down let's get it on some marvin gay yo i was perverted <sighs> thank god for jesus and uh, and salvation so yeah i had dreams of having if i have dreams that we'll have a family like you see here there's even a, like shimpundu say I call my husband shimpundu maybe we'll have twins who knows like i said it was in the times of when we had no pinterest so you have to make do so here i talked about the family altar and everything i want and yeah and i think there's been a possibility of adoption in the in the in the pipes in the pipeline sky yeah 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 and so yeah it's just so exciting it, like there's there's a lot fam like there's 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 a lot um always been like big on personal development it's just it's who it's, it's good it's, it's just who i am it's the process Hmm. something i'm always also i was always, i've always been you see i always went back to the drawing board if i feel like i failed i went back to the to the drawing board still focusing on my nine farms as you can see uh, put god first raise 400 yes so as you can see here it said raise 400 dollars back since i failed so after my uncle had given me that 400 dollars i said because i had failed I, I owed it to him and and i needed to to give it back to him let me see how much 400 dollars is now seven thousand two hundred okay grateful for uncles who believe in us yep by the time the dollar was like at four quacha guys relax i didn't eat that much money this was now 2009 look into oil franchise of a filling station eh seriously join christian lawyers foundation <laughs> i'm still dreaming about stones i don't even know what i wanted in masaiti eh <laughs> like guys there's a lot but yeah this ah, this has been so surreal be we definitely become what what we read you know and the relationships we have and it's just i think it makes sense that that i am the way that i am 
I, I feel like I have in, in looking at this journal, I've been able to to understand it's like getting into my mind again whatever many years ago this was and see why I'm the way I am and this is great I'm very happy I'm very happy I did this so yeah thanks for joining me and yeah just walking through my journal from 15 years ago and it makes sense that I am the way that I am and I'm a little disappointed that I'm not too far too far ahead and thank you for joining me until the next one this has been Wupe. I'm so glad you could make time to hang out with me for all this time. Remember to like, subscribe, invite a friend. Remember this platform is for women in their 30s to encourage them to overcome limiting beliefs and follow their dreams for holistic success. That is why we're here. So do tell a friend to tell a friend and tell that friend to tell a friend and then subscribe and like and share and do all that, all that good stuff. I appreciate you. I hope you will comment so that we can engage and build a community together. I love you. Bye.